Lemon Amiga present. A Playtime video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Hill Sea Lidl, developed by Private Affair and published by Vulcan Software in 1995. This game was created by husband-wife team Lisa Tuna and Paul Hale Carrington and their company was Vulcan Software and this was at the time the latest Vulcan game in the line. So without further ado let's check this game out and right at the start it gives us what we call in this country in the UK a promenade which is kind of a walkway on the front of a sea and it's kind of seafront and you can see that it also gives us lots of buttons that we can press which are all unlabeled and we'll have to get used to what all of these buttons do as we're playing this game. You can see we can do various things, we can hire workers, we can check out the tourists as well and this button means we can check out the beach area and flip between the beach and the promenade with that button and so right at the start of the game let's start on the beach first of all and let's go to the builder and from here we can select what we want and you can buy some land for 20,000 with that pile of gold or what it looks like on the left hand side or we can go ahead and click the pages and that will show us the amusements that we can buy for the beach area because this is kind of a beach simulator or a promenade simulator where we get to build things and just like theme park we'll get lots of tourists riding around on our attractions and we can charge them money for doing that and a bit later on we can also give them drinks and food as well so you can see that we can get tons and tons of things going on and if you click on the hand that takes you back so click on the pages moves forward and the hand takes you back so it's not intuitive but once you know what to do you can see that the buying price is listed and also the width of the building or creation and you can see that the portaloos the toilets are one meter in width and it will cost us forty thousand so you can see that we have quite some money at the start of the game one million to spend on whatever we like but believe you me that money will disappear very quickly so at the start of the game it's paramount to get something that you can afford that is going to generate some money so let's buy the windsurfers windsurf hire that costs three hundred thousand which is a huge amount and for 500,000, that's half a million, we can buy ourselves some jet skis. So that's very expensive and it won't leave us too much left. And let's click on the money, let's buy that and then we can place that wherever we want to do that. In this case, it's on the beach. So let's spread those amusements out. And that means that we have windsurfers and also the jet skis. By clicking on those we can now change the amount of money that they charge and the ride won't operate until you've sorted this out and so the higher price that's recommended to be around a hundred for the lowest possible unit and then once you go up a level 200 and 300 so you'll have to balance the higher price if it's too expensive then nobody will ride it and the commission also means the percentage of that price that the person that's running that machine will actually get so if we make sure that, that is 30 coins for every 450 490 500 
then that means the person is still happy as long as they have a smiling face on the bottom. It means they will be polite to the customers and they're perfectly happy to maintain and run that machine. If the commission is too low, then the person will be frowning at customers and that's not very good. It means customers won't come back to the beach. So always make sure that the commission is smiling and you'll just have to figure out the higher price because if it's too expensive, they won't use the machine. So you can see that there is a service cost as well, 500. And if the machine is running down, we'll have to service it and we'll have to see what it's doing. You can also see we can demolish the thing as well. So we're not actually limited to those things. You can see we're leaving the promenade alone for the time being because the promenade is very expensive as we shall see later on. So you can see as time progresses, more and more people will visit the beach and just like a theme park, they will then use the facilities. And definitely the beach is the easier one of the two, the beach and the promenade. So definitely go for that first of all. And you can see people in the background are already building sandcastles and spreading out on that beach. And you can see people wading in the water and the blue things you can see next to the water is actually litter. If you get too much litter on the beach, you'll have to sweep it out and you can see various people that we can hire, both on the beach and on the promenade. We'll also have to collect the money with a money collector. We can advertise shows with an advertiser and there's also a lifeguard here. Let's just click on that lifeguard and that means that they can save people on the beach and also babe watch as well. So this coming out in 1995, Baywatch was definitely a topical thing. And so they're trying to cash in on that phenomenon. We can click on the speed as well, and that will take away quite a few frames and that enhances and increases the frame rate. And you can see that there is a spanner icon and when that blue bar goes all the way down, it basically means that the thing is broken and we'll have to fix it. On the promenade, you can also see people dropping litter left, right and centre and there's a bag lady there with the shopping basket and when that bag lady appears, that will detriment the promenade and people will be disgusted by that and they won't come back next year. And that's not too bad at the moment because we're not too bothered about the promenade as long as the beach is clear. That's what we're concentrating on at the moment and we'll get a safety inspector both on the promenade and on the beach every now and again. So before the safety inspector comes along, we'll have to make sure that our rides are in tip top condition. And after so long, we'll also get some beach awards and some awards as well. And you can see we haven't won anything at this point. We also didn't book a show either. And I think you can book one show per week which we will get to a bit later on. And that's in the local theatre and we can hire various guys to entertain the people in a theatre. Unfortunately, we're gonna need a lot more people on the beach and you can see the take-ins pile up until we get somebody to collect all those take-ins. And on the beach, there is no idiots coming around to rob us. Okay. So all we need to do is to hire a guy, a collector to run along and as soon as he touches one of our facilities, he will then collect the money from that and that money will then appear in the very top right corner. The collector will have to travel the length of the beach before that money will appear. But again, there's no robbers to worry about. So we don't have to hire any bodyguards for that guy at this point and everything seems fairly easy. And we're just ticking over on 300k at the moment, which isn't amazing. And you can see the lost ride costs us 100k. And that's not really going to bring us any money in because the lost ride is very cheap to maintain. But it also brings in the lost amount of cash. So definitely go for the highest and the biggest rides that you can afford early. And then hopefully, because it does take some time to build that cash back up again, it means that you can afford another ride and a bigger ride sooner rather than later. If you start with the weediest rides, like the slides, then you won't get virtually any money back from doing that and it'll take forever to build that up again. 
As you can see, we can even load and save at any point as well. And we have five slots that we can access with the F keys. So we can save that up by pressing the save button and then F1. And then if we load back up that save or load up another save in this case, you can see that this is one of my practice runs. I've never seen or played this game before, so I've no idea what I'm doing. But you can see on the beach we now have 29 people. There's only five people on the promenade. We're not worried about that. And we've now got 92 weekly visitors. We'll definitely need 100 people on the beach before we can start advertising a show. And you can see that we have got some beach facilities on the very back wall. And you can see that by buying extra land, we can move down the beach as well and expand our enterprise down the beach so that we, when we run out of room, we can simply buy some extra land. And people are frowning at the moment. That's because the rides aren't in good repair. And we'll have to make sure that all of the rides are in good repair, as well as cheap enough for the people to buy them. Otherwise, they won't use them. And if a ride is empty, then that's just a wasted ride. So the lowest one is around about 100, which is around about one pound 5p in this country, the UK, and then you can escalate the price 200, 300 as it goes on. This one's worth around 300, and then maybe the jet skis worth maybe 500. You'll have to work that out for yourself. But there is an optimum price to charge people where they will be able to afford it, and so you will have to go through day by day. You can see the days ticking over on the very top of the screen. And you can see as we accumulate money, the takings will be listed. And takings just means the profit that we've managed to get from that particular ride. And again, to collect that profit, we'll have to send over a guy to pick that up, hire that guy to run around and collect that cash. And you can have however amount of money cash in the rides you can have 200k in every ride if you want and completely leave that alone but eventually you'll start running out of money so you're gonna have to collect it one way or the other also after every month or every so often it will give us a breakdown of what we've spent so far and you can see service charges that's the money the 500 that we spent repairing things the wages on the promenade is zero, wages on the beach is 9,000 quid and labour casual, that's the hired help that we've hired twice to collect the money and then the beach takings is what that guy collected so that gives us a general profit and loss and that means that we can see whether we're making money or whether we aren't You can see by clicking on the people, we can see how many people there are million about and that depends on the day as well, earlier on in the week and later on in the week. And clicking on the theatre, we can also book shows and acts and you can see various acts. Uh, the Juggling Jimbos is a juggling act and uh, the Chippendales is a striptease act. Marvin the Marvelous is, well, I'm not quite sure, I think he's a magician. And Michael Jackson, of course, Michael Jackson Live, this is yet another game which features Wacko Jacko. And that's on top of Rockstar 8, my hamster, which we're also going to review at some point. And Bingo is available. And we can also hire a balloon guy. He's 50,000 quid, which is uh, very expensive and also the ticket price is quite expensive at a five reach so we can afford it we really shouldn't be booking a show at this point but just to show you what will happen if we do then you can click on that and it's five pounds per ticket and you are better booking a show on the monday and then that gives us the full week to advertise Whoa. In order to advertise, we're going to have to hire a guy to advertise, and that's called in the UK a sandwich board man. And that means that they have a board front and back with an advert on. They have to run around with that all day long advertising the show. And if you hire an advertising guy, he will then walk down the beach, and you have to hire that guy, I think, every single day in order for that to be effective. So by the time it gets to the show, which is at the end of Sunday, you should have hired that guy all week, every day, 
in order to encourage the most number of people to attend our shows. So clicking around the contraptions again at complete random, we need to maintain those as much as we can. And as soon as it gets down to the last quarter, the last third of health, then we need to be clicking on that. And I think we can only hire one maintenance guy at once. So when he's busy, we can't fix the other one until he's finished. So let's see, promenade zero, beach facilities award zero, visitors award zero, length of the beach award zero. And we have book to show and there's a balloon guy. So we spent 50,000 hiring this guy and booking the venue. And so we're gonna need more than that if we want to make a profit. You can see the income that we've got per sale is listed in the top left corner and 50,000 is listed in the middle of the screen. And so let's see how many people we managed to get and I can tell you now it's around 30,000, which means we lost 20,000 with this activity. We can then see the show if we like, and some of those are quite entertaining. So let's see the show and check it out. Most of the game is silent, but we do get a bit of music on this section. And even though this balloon show is very good, it really does take a lot of people to break even. And maybe you really need over 100 people walk around on the beach and book in that venue in order to make a profit. So definitely don't book things until you are an amazing success. And you can see on Monday, there's hardly anybody walking around and everything is cleared at the beginning of a new week. And if the beach is clear and clean and helpful and healthy, then people will come back day after day. And if it isn't, then they won't come back. So let's check out our expenditure. And you can see that we are spending quite some money and we are having to spend money on hiring guys and casual labor. But we are getting an amount in. It's only, well, 156,000 is the balance. And that appears in the top corner. That's the carry forward money that we get to carry forward to the next week. Moving now over to another play. Let's just check out another one of my warm up plays. This is this time the promenade area and this time we're going to buy things for the promenade and let's see how much we can make doing that. Whoa. Whoa. The beach front area is something that we like in Britain. We like beachfront cafes and beachfront activities and beach bars. We actually love doing stuff like that on the beach. If you go to Spain, then there is a lack of beach bars and beach facilities. The Spanish have usually built a road on the beach, which ruins that proposition. But if you go to somewhere like Benidorm or somewhere like that, maybe Barcelona, and there are some places around Portugal which do have beach bars, which are bars which virtually face the beach and beach amenities and ice cream parlors and all that lot. Of course, you can't move for them in Benidorm, but apart from that, most other places in Spain don't have them. And quite a lot of places in the UK have them because we like beach facilities over here. So we can also build quite a lot of amenities as well. Lamps so that we can light our way and lucky dips, teddy bears and tables and chairs so that people can sit down. And that's also helpful. And so let's check out, we can build shrubberies and trees and lamps and we can also build some quite expensive facilities and fish and chips is another British thing and most people don't eat fish and chips in the rest of the world but definitely that's something that the British like to do and of course bins, litter bins as well, trash cans, they'll definitely need to be used and then that helps us because then we don't have to clean up the place constantly 
people can just throw away the rubbish in the bin. So, unlike the beach area, we'll now get a van which appears and a worker will also get to work building that once the van has dropped off the raw materials on the seafront. So you can see the van has got markers down where various things are going to be built and then slowly, given a number of days, those materials will be piled up and scaffolding will appear. Then the worker will get to work building that facility and you can see quite some extra things that we need to take care of on the promenade and we've still got to take care of the selling price and the commission as well we've still got to service the thing and we can still demolish it we've still got takings and things like that but we've also got a warehouse to worry about and orders to worry about and buying prices as well As the equipment goes up and it becomes more expensive then the buying price will also be more expensive and that doesn't necessarily mean that the selling price will be because of course you have to make it as cheap as possible in order for people to buy it. If you make it too expensive they'll just carry on walking straight by it and if you don't have too many facilities to keep them on the beachfront, on the seafront, unfortunately they'll carry on walking without spending any money. So you have to make sure that they do hang around and that woman's complaining that it's too expensive and they haven't got any. So the ordering has to be taken care of as well. So you can see lots of things empty that we can order. We've built a postcard, an ice cream guy and fish and chips. So let's order some postcards, 21 of them. 22 ice cream cones and if we click on the top button and I think press the right bounce button it gives us the full amount so that's 72 fish and chips we can then click on the wholesaler and the wholesaler will then tell us if those are available to send those will then be sent in the delivery wagon and that is a separate thing from the building wagon and we won't get that until the delivery wagon arrives and so until we get those raw facilities it means we cannot build anything we can't sell anything so we can't sell any more ice creams until they've come in and that delivery has arrived and woman's still unhappy there because we don't have any so let's just wait around you can see in the warehouse the 72 and on order zero and on order zero so it looks like they've arrived in the warehouse buying price 40 so we'll have to make sure that we have got the stock available in order to sell those and that's just another extra thing that you have to worry about on the promenade See, clicking on the people again, it doesn't take very long for the number of people to build up. On the beach, you might notice it gives us loads of people by default, but on the promenade, it doesn't. And all these other things, they will I'll go through them right now, actually. So, Brian Spiller, we can see how much he wants to eat, how much he wants to drink, how much money he's got for spending on sweets and spare things and how much money he's got available for buying cuddly toys and inflatable things and useless junk that you usually pick up at the seaside so you can see just like theme park these people will be hungry and thirsty and so you'll have to provide things in order for them to get rid of their hunger and their thirst and it means you'll have to space things out as well because once they've bought something you'll have to wait a few paces before they can afford to buy something else so you'll have to click on people individually and find out what they actually want and how happy they are at any particular moment and obviously you want to keep everybody happy and then they'll spend lots of money moving to the wholesalers page you can see how much we've got in stock at the moment by that blue line and that goes down slowly as we're selling those and then if you click on the two hands by mistake what that will do is put those on 
oid a bit well I actually sell that oider it just put those numbers into the order form but we won't actually commission that so even though we have ordered things we haven't told the wholesaler to send them yet so that means we're struggling at this moment until we remember to do that and of course cleaning up the streets is also essential because if the people see that it's messy and dirty they will make a voice speech sound effect that says ugh, ugh, I don't like that so here we go we've realized hopefully that those things haven't been ordered uh -huh, uh -huh. and the wholesaler agrees that all of those have now been ordered so the van's finally now on its way if you don't order things then you won't have things to sell so at this stage it's paramount to have tons of things to sell but unfortunately you can't order everything because we're already down to our last 120,000 cash let's click on everybody again and you can see as soon as they buy soda then that bar will go down and you can see the people walking around and fussiness is low for this particular woman and you can see that that changes depending on the people that we click on So it can be fun to check people out and spy on people and it's payday so that means that the owners of these shops will get paid no matter what and that means that their funding will be deducted from the bank now to how much we've took or not taken so far we haven't taken anything so far and they have over a thousand pounds or whatever it is in their cash registers so at some point before it gets too much in there we're gonna have to send and hire a collector around to collect that money but you can see that there is now a thug walking around he's got a red baseball helmet on and the thug will carry on walking around every day and if that thug connects with the money collector he will rob him and that means that we collect no money whatsoever so definitely what you have to do is protect the collector on the promenade and that means that you can get that cash so we haven't collected any cash at the moment so first of all let's hire a promenade sweeper and make sure that that's a promenade sweeper and not a beach cleaner so that guy is now sweeping up and you can see the thug he won't give us any problems until we hire the collector so you can see all of these things have now got thousands in there and so in order to get that cash the first thing we're gonna have to do is to well if we hire a collector behind the thug as you can see at the moment then the thug won't touch him because he's too far ahead on the street so the collector can now collect the money from the postcards collect the money from the ice creams collect the money from the fish and chip shop okay. the fish and chip vendor and if you time it correctly before the thug has started running around at high speed which is entirely possible you should be able to get off the screen in time to not get robbed but if you don't then cling that guy's just been robbed and that means that we don't get any money back from all that hard work that we've just done and you see not much money is now in that bank so you can see the guy with the crew cut and the big smile on his face is actually hired help which I've labeled as the thug in this game and he's basically a bodyguard so well we can see we have took some takings going to that so maybe we did manage to get some cash after all but you can see comparing that to the beach we've made 28,000 so far from the promenade and I think we made more than that from the beach and it means we only have 137,000 in the account whereas on the beach I think we we're up to 150,000 by this point so definitely the beach is less bothersome you don't have to hire so many guys and you can see when we hire a security guard like we have at the moment and as long as they're walking down the road in the opposite direction it means it keeps everybody safe and happy and that will continue I think for a number of days I'm not quite sure but as soon as we unclick him that means we don't need him because we're not really collecting any cash at this point
So you can see it is possible to build on the seafront, but we're not really getting anywhere in this game because it takes a long time to build up customers and because the selling price is rather mean on the seafront compared to the beach, it means we're not going to get much from it. And the shop fronts, well, they need constant repairing as well. And, well, thugs come around and rob our money, which doesn't happen on the beach, and things like that. So definitely the beach area is the easiest one. You don't have to worry about warehouses either. And there is actually a slight bug in the game because it says the product available in the warehouse you might have seen on the previous screen what that actually means is product available in the shop that you're actually selling from it doesn't actually tell you the amount in the warehouse what that means is the amount that you're actually selling in the shop from the warehouse so that's a bit of a bug but that's what that means you can even buy extra land as well even though that's ridiculously expensive and that gives us extra length but you can see the funding has gone down to virtually zero because of that and uh, definitely don't buy land don't purchase land ever in this game and even in the help sheet on the official Vulcan website it says never pay land never buy it never do anything with it because you can't sell it again and it's possible to complete the entire game just using one single screen without buying any land whatsoever. You just demolish the cheapest to most worthless ride or facility and you build the most expensive one in its place. So it is possible and they do actually recommend that in the help tips on the actual website. So you can see we've spent a fortune and we've got virtually nothing left. So what we're going to do now is to move on to our final play of the game. This is another play where I've played it all over again. And you can see we've now got the basic facilities and we've constructed various things on the beach that will cost the same price so those beach facilities and that means that hopefully we can now start to get awards because awards in this game make or break your progress and i couldn't figure out how to get anywhere with the game until i got the awards you can see in the background there are two things in the back left corner and that right corner those are actually toilet facilities lavatories and those smell so if you're going to put lavatories on the beach it's better to cluster them together and it's better to separate them as much as possible because they stink and so let's see if you have enough beach facilities and there it is we've now got 100,000 pounds free cash because we've got beach facilities and we haven't got anything on the promenade we don't need to worry about that We've got four toilets for people to use and in the very middle of the screen those are changing rooms which people can change and the Punch and Judy show as well if you buy donkey hire that stinks as well so you better separate the donkey hire and the toilet facilities stink as well so anything that smells on the beach you have to separate it off and you can see in real life Vulcan Software were based in Portsmouth in the UK the bank was the National Westminster Bank and they were based in Portsmouth and in real life there was a really there still is a real place in Portsmouth called Hill Sea Lido Hill Sea is a bit like Hill Valley in Back to the Future you can't have a hill on the sea but Hill Sea with one L is in Portsmouth and Hill Sea Lido is basically a swimming pool in Portsmouth swimming pool for the people so you can see on this sheet that when we get that beach award it means that we get tons of free cash coming in and automatically it means we can put some deck chairs down on the beach so that people can hang around and if we put some decent facilities down like speed boats that's going to give us tons of cash as well so this game was created by husband and wife team this was designed by Lisa Tuna who also designed all of the Valhalla well most of Valhalla games and also timekeepers and this one as well and her husband I think or at least her business partner was Paul Terence Hale Carrington and they made up a company called Private Affair and the publishing company which they also created in 1994 was Vulcan Software and you might know Vulcan yes that's the Greek god of fire and volcanology is actually a study of volcanoes but to vulcanize something means to affect rubber with heat to make it tougher 
and also these guys fully admitted that they were both into Star Trek, so Vulcan, live long and prosper, and their symbol, their logo, is still a hammer bashing down to create sparks, and that's supposed to be the Greek god of fire. So Vulcan software we traded in for a long time in Portsmouth, and then they split up and went to two opposite sides of the country but for a time Vulcan Software were producing games on the Amiga and they were established in 1994 the first game was Valhalla Lord of Infinity which according to them was the very first ever voice speech sound effect game or at least adventure where when you click on something it'll actually tell you what you're doing and I'm not quite sure would that be 1994 whether that was the very first but they claim that to be, and that was their claim to fame for quite some time. Aww. Whoa. Aww. Aww. When we finish, it will automatically take us back to the promenade and not slightly misleading because we really don't want to be affected by that at this stage. You can see the lavatories are spread out, the changing rooms are in the middle, away from those smelly toilets. We've got a Punch and Judy show, which I think is kind of French, but we've got one of them on the beach, and we've got our facilities spread out as well. It's definitely worth paying for all this casual labour to keep the beach tip-top and in good working order, and if you can get the beach nice and clean, then that's great but as long as you have the beach facilities in the background then that means that we'll get the beach award and as long as it's clean as well and that 100,000 we'll get I think at the end of maybe every week or at the end of every calendar month but whichever it is 100,000 free cash is definitely worth it if you don't or you can't for whatever reason get that beach award then all you need to do is to buy some more facilities and they only cost 40,000 each and you get 100,000 for doing it. So no matter which way you look at it, eventually that award will pay for those facilities. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. You can see the back of the beach has its own facilities separate to the front of the beach. And I'm putting donkey rides in there next to the lavatories because again they smell the donkeys. And you don't want to be putting them next to the kids Punch and Judy show. So you have to, according to the help tips, work that out for yourself and work out what's best to do there and definitely don't put two things together otherwise people will be unhappy and you can buy by spending quite a lot of cash you can extend the public facilities in the background as well so again if you don't win that award for whatever reason just extend the beach build some more facilities and then you can get the facilities award that doesn't matter about the rides you can have a billion rides on the beach it won't matter and as long as the rear facilities are there so that people can lie down in some bed, then you get the facilities award and that's what matters in this case. So that's what we're doing. We've managed to get quite some facilities bought now and you can see people using those and the jet skis are moving up and down the beach the rubber dinghies the speed boats as well are pulling people behind them they're quite expensive as you would imagine but you will get that cash back eventually and you can see as soon as people walk into that and they will remove that facility from the beach and then that will appear in the ocean as they're moving around on that you can see virtually all the facilities are still parked on the beach so that means they're too expensive and if people are complaining that it's too expensive then that's a wasted opportunity so reduce and reduce and reduce the higher price whatever it takes to get people interested in those facilities so that they're being used up all of the time that means that they get wear and tear and damaged but it means that we can keep some money rolling in as much as possible and the old grannies won't tend to use the facilities much but I find maybe if there isn't too many deck chairs on the beach that means people have no other choice but to use the facilities and if they're sitting around in deck chairs all day long it means they might sit there and not spend any cash 
So that's why I've demolished and removed all the dentures that I had on the sea and on the beach for that reason, to get people moving. And you can see people buying scuba gear and diving now. That's very expensive. That's the final one on the right. And that is possible to buy tons and tons of things for hire on the beach. It's just a shame that the beach facilities and hiring getting more land and extending the beach costs a fortune and that's absolutely not economical on the best of times. So of course make sure your refuse collector manages to clean the beach and that was a submarine popping up it looks like and as long as you get that then the people will return. It doesn't really matter for the beach award but definitely you want the people to return day after day, month after month and then once you have over a hundred people running up and down on the beach, sunbathing, watching shows and that kind of thing, even in the background you can see kids moving around building sandcastles, then that means that you can start to hire people for the shows. And then hopefully when the shows are a good idea, then that means that you've got enough cash in to really rake that in. And you need cash to make cash in this game, it takes a long time to build that up. And we've just plummeted all the way down again to 21,000 and you have to watch the wages as well because the wages will go out of the bank so you have to make sure that there's tons of them on there and in this particular play you can see four beach facilities changing facilities in the background that doesn't matter it won't award us any more money for the beach award and we really don't want to spend any more cash on the facilities than we really want to but hopefully it will encourage more people onto the beach. So you can see, even though we've spent that cash, we've still only got 100,000 beach facility award, and that's definitely recommended to get that every single time. I've never played this game before, actually when I worked out that the beach award is the very thing that you need to get anywhere at all and take him from the beach you can see that's another hundred grand so as soon as you're making two hundred grand a week okay. then you can imagine two, four, six, eight thousand, two, eight hundred thousand a month that's almost a million in a month that means you can save up for a month you can afford the most expensive items Sometimes it's quite frustrating not to spend all your money at once and you have to wait for all the facilities to build up before you can even afford things. And now that we've got the beach, as soon as you have maybe 200,000 coming in from the beach, then you can get to work building things on the seafront. And guess what we're going to do? Yes, we're going to build those facilities in the background trying to get the promenade facility award that's another hundred thousand a month so all we need to do is maybe buy six things and as long as we've got six things maybe even at random then it will give us that award so well that's six things now let's see let's buy something else that's seven and that's eight so hopefully now that we've got eight things, are we going to go for nine? Yes, that's nine things down on the seafront. And the teddy bear grabber, that's ten. And so let's put a picnic table down as well. So that's really going to clear us out of cash at the moment. And you can see all that money that we had originally all piled up. Unfortunately, again, has gone down to our last 130,000. But what that should do once we get the delivery van to build everything up that should give us the promenade facility award and the beach facility award together at the end of every week that means that we've just doubled our income simply by providing facilities and as soon as you have that money coming in then that's 300,000 a week from the facilities and the awards so we've just won the prom award we've just won the beach award and the visitors award is very hard to get unless you have millions of visitors and i've never known myself get the length of the beach award even spending a billion dollars doing that 
so I never tried to get the length of the beach award. But you can see with those things rolling in, then we're now getting over a million a, a month out of this game. That's fantastic. If you can get a million a month out of it, then you can build the best rides and you can have some real good fun playing it. It's just a pity that the difficulty curve is out of whack and this game can really punish players that try to do too much too soon. This is definitely one of those games that you want to come back to every Sunday or something like that when you're just kicking around and you want to see people milling around and it's very much like theme park but it's very 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 hard to make a profit in this game at the beginning. Taking a look at the profit and loss statement of Vulcan Software during the 1995-96 season, you can see that they only just made a profit, or maybe they didn't actually with this particular game, because actually doing that and making a profit is very difficult. And I think they might have made 8,000 quid during that entire year. And so it was unprofitable and this game sank without a trace at the time, mostly due to some very mediocre reviews from the magazines. And I've always wanted to play this and check it out, so I'm glad that I'm doing it at the moment. Moving through to those magazines, you can see Amiga Power gave this 60%, See Amiga gave it 65%, both complaining that it takes too long to get anywhere and it's really punishing and it doesn't offer you any incentives to play it longer and it really does but it has got a steep difficulty curve. The Amiga format score was 71%, the current Lemon Amiga score is 76 Amiga Magazine awarded this 80%, Amiga Joker didn't bother to rate it or review it at all, the one Amiga awarded this also 80% and Amiga Computing saw all of the bright side that this game had to offer okay. and interviewing the public and fixing the needs and things like that and it awarded this game 90% so with all those 80s and 90s it means the average score for Hilsey Lido is 7.5 out of 10 I think this game has got some good things going for it and when the tourists start building up and everybody's nice and happy and the National NatWest Bank gives us that bank statement again just like theme park you can see the money rolling in then once you get half a million in the bank then the game really takes off and you can start really putting on some entertainment for the people and you can start again maybe putting a few deck chairs around and trying to experiment. Thank you for viewing this play guide and review and we'll see you again in another one sometime soon. Thank you.